Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. <clears throat> so before we get into this video, I want to mention something quickly. I've been getting quite a bit of comments asking why I keep clearing my throat, why I um, make obnoxious noises. <clears throat> and I do apologize because, you know, you don't know this. Um, I do have Tourette's Syndrome, and that basically, you could search it up, I'm not going to explain it now, but that's... It's a type of condition where I need to make those noises, and it's really tough for me. And I know you did not know that uh, for those, so it's, I'm just letting you guys know in case it is a little bit, you know, obnoxious during the video. I do apologize. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, just don't go, you know, meanfully. Don't be mean in the comments about that. I haven't really seen many mean comments, which is good. Uh, so, uh, before we uh, further get into this video, consider subscribing to this channel. It really helps this channel grow. It <clears throat> really helps uh, get this uh, video get out to more people. And just, why not? <laughs> consider liking and uh, commenting as well. So, the first thing I want to look at... Um, <clears throat> sorry, I mean, I didn't even show you the title. Or I did show you it, but I never mentioned it. So, we're going to be looking at why it will be a cold slash snowy November. Again, the snowy part of the September... I didn't mean November, I meant September. <clears throat> the snowy part of the September is very rel relative, and I do not think that it will, you know, be snowy all the way down in central Illinois or northern Iowa. <clears throat> but what I mean is, compared to an average September, which usually it only snows in the mountains, really, it could be a snowy one because maybe parts of <clears throat> extreme northern Minnesota, uh, northern Dakota could see some snow, maybe the UP of Michigan and far northern regions of the northeast. And this is a three to four week outlook which spans from uh, I think around the September 20th through the 30th, the last 10 to 15 days of the month. You can see they have a big area of below average conditions across the central plains, <clears throat> a even bigger area that is equal chances, so it could either be a below average or above, and uh, even bigger area being uh, of above here, and above right there. Um, I would not be too <coughs> confident about this, okay, <clears throat> you know, being uh, too above average. I think that this may uh, be you know pushed back a little bit. I think the above average conditions may bring up um, their boundaries up to here, but uh, I think it will be something more like this. Let me show you this whole September. I, yeah, I know this is only three to four week outlook, but if we we're talking about the whole September, I think <clears throat> I think it will look something more like this. Here is where the cold will predominantly lie. And here, south of that, I think it will be warm. But in these areas, I think it will be rather chilly. Um, you know, especially for the north central U.S. So, uh, this is a three to four week outlook. Now, let's look quickly at the six to ten day outlook. Thank goodness September is not that far out. It's, uh, well, today is August 28th. <clears throat> and... Uh, it starts uh, in three, four days, so it's not far out, so this is not, you know, the more, obviously, the closer it is, the more accurate it's going to be, so this forecast, I have medium to high confidence in, <clears throat> like, compared to my winter forecast, where <clears throat> I have low confidence on it, because it's very far out, but in terms of, you know, relative to other winter forecasts I had in previous years, this year's is a little bit higher. Well, you know, in this case, it's just naturally much higher, and it's looking as if it's uh, even higher for being a short-term forecast. I mean, you can see the 6 to 10 day outlook, which spans from September 2nd <clears throat> to the... Uh, uh, through the 6th, you could see a, a small area of below average conditions, <clears throat> and a quite a big uh, chunk of area that is above average, <clears throat> and this uh, actually uh, is only spanning four days since it's a six to ten outlook, so you know, this is not the whole month of September, but I do think there will be some phases where it will be warmer for much of the country, maybe one or two days between a passing storm, and I think there will be conditions where, you know, <clears throat> or days where it will be way below average for much of the country, I mean, I think I'll show you an image in just a bit, it's of this uh, potential pattern change that the newest model run is showing and it's uh, it's affecting most of the country so you know it'll be kind of back and forth but it seems as predominantly it will be rather chilly and known for that for the past week of august at least in my location <clears throat> it's been fairly uh, it's been fairly fairly chilly it has not been very warm at all and Sorry if I was away from the mic a little bit. Uh, it was not. It has not been warm at all. But <clears throat> you know, if you live in the West, you, it, it probably was a little bit warmer, and it will continue to be warmer. That's probably the biggest area of confidence I have right now, where September will be will be warm. The Northwest, <clears throat> the Southwest, far portions 
<clears throat> of the South, so like Southern Texas, Southern Louisiana, not even just a whole Louisiana, <clears throat> just, you know, the Southern parts of those states. And uh, the southeast, yeah, maybe below average. Some blasts of cooler air may reach them, though. And the northeast is a big if. Um, so we'll have to see about that. 8 to 14 day outlook, you could see uh, expanding from 4th through the 10th. So we already had the first 10 days of September covered. <clears throat> and they're showing pretty below average conditions, uh, bigger than the 6 to 10. <clears throat> and this is, uh, you know, expanding further south and further west and east. But still, you notice how it's above average in the west, above average across the south and <clears throat> the southeast okay but you can see how uh, the northeast is right on the line between <clears throat> being below average uh, in terms of temperatures and being above average and some areas are neutral <clears throat> so this is still a lot of uh, figuring out we have to do um, you know where the exact ones will line up that's almost you know as close as we could get right now uh, basically showing you uh, what will come and you know exactly which where the cold boundary will lie it's tough to say and this is what i wanted to show you which i was talking about earlier you could see that this is actually a cold map or a temperature two meter temperature anomaly map and it, it's not a cold map it does however show coldness or below average temperatures i do not know when exactly this is <clears throat> this is around 200 hours out <clears throat> so yes granted the gfs model or whatever model this was is in la la land <clears throat> meaning it's not very accurate since it's five <clears throat> since it's five uh, days or 200 hours out which is <clears throat> around six to seven days actually so you know it's it's not gonna be too accurate but <clears throat> it does have not just one uh, of these model you know one of these uh, arctic blasts or fall blasts it has several of them in a row so when it has several of those in a row um you know that it's onto some sort of pattern and one may change another may change but the other two may not change you know <clears throat> that's that's why you gotta notice patterns in meteorology more than you gotta notice the actual you know uh obscure event like a snowstorm snowstorms are much harder to predict than patterns because patterns are supported <clears throat> usually by many more models and <clears throat> the model that is showing it is more, uh, you know, steady and uh, confident about it than rather just one snowstorm, which it could change from model to model. And we could see possibly very chilly for this uh, time period, which was around, uh, yeah, again, 200 hours out. This would be around September 5th, 6th, 7th, and you could see below average conditions. And if I were to for show you this further in our tropical tidbits, there was one moment where every almost every single portion of the country was in the blue. It was ridiculous. It was something I haven't seen in quite a while. So what I have right here is what a typical e um I think this was an EPO. What a typical EPO does to uh, the U.S. and the EPO is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, and it, I didn't show you the actual indices, but it's gonna be going negative in the next couple of days, and you can see this is what a negative impact has <clears throat> on November, and you can see that this was many years. The only one missing is 1982. I'm assuming all the way back now to 1981, and you can see uh, below average conditions. Not horribly, uh, but um, still there, 2 to 4 degrees, and you can see this is September of many, many, many that were <clears throat> that were known for having a negative EPO, or yeah, negative EPO, and this one, <clears throat> I think, is uh, a, uh, what's a negative AO <clears throat> has to, uh, to impact on, <clears throat> on the, uh, the, the, the sorry on the September as well and you can see not as defined <clears throat> not as many uh, negative air or regions state regions in the blue uh, not a single one in the orange or red or yellow but there are some in the light green which is still two to four degrees two to three I would say two uh, degrees below average which is still quite a bit and you can see these were all the years <clears throat> that were used for this uh, many years and this was actually dating back to the 50s, uh, so not just the 80s, which I previously thought. But that makes it, you know, a bit better. <laughs> More wide range of years, wide variety. So that's basically all I have for you guys. Uh, it may have seemed like it was a bit more talkative and less showing, but I just wanted to show you that September is going to be cold, and it's going to be most likely snowy as well because 
<clears throat> due to the the cold and you know even if it's below average in precip which it's not going to be <clears throat> but even if it is below it could still be snowy as long as it's cold i mean you know even if you've received one inch of rain that, that equivalent to 10 inches of snow so you could see how one tenth of an inch <clears throat> of rain which would be you know not a lot could produce an inch of snow <clears throat> so uh, definitely uh, that is something to consider also but it seems like the pattern will be very active with plenty of big storms and, tr uh, and big uh, sh disturbances passing through the area. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.